The number of people using wireless phones today is increasing at a rapid pace. As more people turn to wireless phones to make their lives safer and more productive, they expect quality service and connections. To provide this level of service in a city like New York requires wireless antennas to be located throughout the city. Myths and misinformation about perceived health risks associated with these antennas have left a few members of the New York community with more questions than answers about wireless technology. For most people, these concerns can be addressed by taking a moment to better understand how wireless antennas actually work. Wireless phones use radio frequencies to transmit voice and data information between the handset and nearby wireless antennas. The antennas themselves are connected to electronic equipment cabinets and traditional telephone lines. From there, the call is relayed to other wireless antennas or the landline voice network for routing to its final destination. This works the same for both outgoing and incoming calls. These radio transmissions are commonly referred to as radio frequency, or RF emissions. In a modern society, we're exposed to a sea of electromagnetic radiation. I mean, we, we have exposures from our appliances, we have exposures from power lines, we have exposures from communication devices. As a leading authority on radio frequency, Dr. Larry Anderson has been studying RF for nearly 50 years. He is one of 14 members worldwide of the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. The commission studies the effects of radio frequency emission and reports to numerous regulatory bodies around the world. Pagers, microwave communication. Drew Thatcher is a certified health physicist and is an expert on radio frequency emission as it pertains to wireless antennas and technology. Many people use cordless phones. Uh, the exposures from a cordless phone are greater, equal if not greater, than the exposures we're talking about from a wireless antenna. Other examples, in the kitchen you have a microwave oven, of course, and at least in my setting, we still have young children in the house and I use a baby monitor. Those baby monitors always provide a much larger exposure than the exposure that we're talking about from a wireless antenna. In fact, wireless antennas provide very little exposure compared to uh, TV stations and FM broadcast stations and other sources of RF energy. In New York City, people are exposed to more RF emission from TV and radio transmitters than wireless antennas. The power emitted from a wireless antenna varies anywhere from 500 to 2,000 watts. That's in comparison to an FM radio station that perhaps puts out 100,000 watts and a TV station that puts out 1 to 5 million watts. The exposure to a person at the ground level or in their home is always dominated by that FM or TV station. But what about people who live in or next to residential buildings with wireless antennas on the rooftop? Does their proximity to antennas and other wireless infrastructure put them at risk? A person living in the top floor of an apartment building that has uh, wireless antennas on the roof, uh, first off, most wireless antennas are placed around the perimeter of the building in order to make sure that their coverage area is, is maximized, those people would not be exposed from the antennas on the perimeter. Now if that antenna were instead moved to the middle of the rooftop, the person would be exposed to just a few percent of the FCC regulatory limit. In many cases, consumers are frustrated because they are unable to make a call from home or in certain parts of their neighborhood. I mean, I used to not get service in my old apartment. It would cut in and out. And I'm thinking, you know, living in a high-rise on the 27th floor, you should be able to get service in a phone without losing the connection. As consumers spend more time using their wireless phones at home, it is necessary to site antennas where coverage is needed, in residential neighborhoods. Since tall buildings can obstruct the wireless signal, it is often necessary for wireless carriers to place multiple antennas in dense urban areas to ensure there is sufficient coverage. Radio frequency emitted from wireless antennas is not a form of ionizing radiation, very low in energy, and have no effect on molecular structures. Ionizing radiation is high energy and has the ability to break up molecular structure. A common example is x-rays administered in doctor's offices. 
radiation is an inaccurate way to refer to uh, wireless antennas. Uh, we have radiation associated with ionizing radiation, with isotopes and with x-rays and those kind of things. But with, with non-ionizing uh, fields, radiation is probably not a good term to use. You know, we, we are exposed to these fields, but it's very low in energy compared to ionizing radiation. There is good news for those concerned about potential health effects resulting from the presence of wireless antennas, especially in residential areas. My view, uh, based on the, the experimental work we've done, as well as being on a number of national and international committees that review the literature, is that um, certainly with regard to the issue of cancer, there's no good evidence that, uh, that wireless RF causes uh, increase in cancer risk.